great for Omega, but cohesively, I'm not sure if they gel well, bro. Uh, it's, it's gonna, they're gonna have to go play out their minds individually to make this work, to be honest. Yeah, uh, lineup rating uh, for Omega a little bit higher. Damage potential, survival potential, all good. Blacklist, Trumps and crowd control just a little bit more. Team coordination a little bit close. Yeah, this is one of those uh, execution uh, wins at games. However, with three purifies, Haji, Perks, and Oheb, Chaco's gonna have the hardest game of his life to find the right target to pick off. Three purifies and a heal. Oh man, good luck to the Chalk Mamba for this one. Let's see if Omega can stop a 2-0 lead for Blacklist International and make it 1-2-1. One, one. As we head into game number two of this epic rivalry between Smart Omega and Blacklist Welcome International. Ian, Leo, it's yours. Tell me this draft doesn't look like an old Blacklist draft. Tell me that's not the case. It's not. No, it does because, again, ultimate buzzing experience, ultimate healing. Rafaela back for Blacklist. And you even throw back to the Bruno. <laughs> yeah. And tell me the old king would not want to play the Alpha. Is that not the only remaining utility jungler in this current metagame? Yeah. So What is going on? So Blacklist really sticking to the roots, their roots, especially since Bonchan is still there as their head coach, really doing wonders for them. So right now, can we expect the same result as to what happened for Blacklist? A strong start for Omega, then Blacklist suddenly th turned things around by the three, four minute mark? You know what, I can't give you an answer just yet because I also do not understand what's going on with Smart Omega. Yes, in the regular season, they brought out some of the crazier picks, like the aforementioned Belarik, the Gatos, which is now a, you know, yeah. real thing, and not to mention the Armilla, but... <laughs> The, the early Eve, right? It seems like we're throwing back to a hero that's worked overseas, but not in the Philippines, not as much, not as often. Uh, I can name like one dude who won in MP of Philippines. Wait, 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 what's, what's this? Oh, no! Oh, Rota goes in, MP the king. Okay, but here of Alpha is oh! able to out sustain. MP even used the retribution, but on the other hand, off come kill. We'll go to Andori first, a trade on to Haji. And as you were saying, I think the point. Uh, wait, Andori goes in after Lord JM, okay? He has no revitalize anymore. Ring of punishment, but Okir. The one we were talking about, the Eve will get the kill. All right, I was gonna say, Super Friends won with the Eve. Yeah. But hey, who am I to put down here? Let me uh, put this away just a bit. I was about to go on a tirade against the Eve. <laughs> uh, but right now, with the turtle spawning in the upper quarter, and that being a lane that Ryota is okay actually just losing and dying for, means this is what he was gonna do compared to what he did in game one. In game one, he was supposed to be in the forefront. He was the catch. In game one, he was the catch, he was the finisher, he was the setter. Here, he's more of a spoiler. And I think given the whole Uber situation that Black is running with, this space is so much better for Omega. Yeah, yeah. All right, folks, I hope you guys understand. This is a new Blacklist. It might be Ube, but they're so good at team fighting. They're so aggressive. And that's why this first turtle, as soon as Omega did not get that first initiation on it, they understood, yeah, we can't fight Blacklist on that. Oh, not oh, like this. On the other hand, though, look at this. Are you solo? What? Oh, Heb, how? Solo kills the Curly Nightmare. <laughs> Didn't even get to hit the Tempest of Blade. What was that? Catching uh, Adoryu off guard as Chakna goes in. Wow. But look at the counter attack from Blacklist, Don't ready work. to save their Filipino sniper. Turn that initiation to their advantage. That was two kills for Oheb. It, it caught Andoryu off guard. I wasn't sure why you went down. Uh, call it a series of unfortunate and confusing events. Yeah, confusing. Unfortunately, we didn't see it fast enough because that's how fast Oheb delivered the final blow to Andoryu. So, to, so the answer to my question earlier was, okay, Blacklist, this is a different start. Blacklist is dominating the early game right away. Yeah, no doubt. Blacklist up by about 600 gold. You'll see that a good chunk of it. Uh, it's in the gold lane. There's about 300, 400 between uh, Oheb and Big J. Given that sudden kill on, on... You know what? Part of me is glad we didn't see what happened. Yeah. Because I wouldn't... I wouldn't accept what happened! <laughs> but the thing is... That's I want a Ling! An, I want an explanation on what happened. I wanted to see, but again, that was a link, very mobile. And, and you mentioned it even, there was, the, the Tempest of Blades was available. Yeah. So, you know what, some things like crop circles, you just accept, you know, like, let's, let's, let's not. There are a lot of theories, but you just gotta accept it. Haji goes oh. over the Crimson Peak and forcing Ukir to go for that flicker. Out here comes a real manipulation as Shaknu will be catched by the Lantern there. Flicker out, he's gonna escape, but here comes Lord JM with the Glorious Pathway. Gonna work on Endoryu here, as Endoryu will still be able to get this purple buff. But right now, you can see Omega can't handle Blacklist blow for blow. Well played. Blacks International, you know, nice check by MP. Using their innate mobility. Again, it's all about mobility for Blacklist. Now, Ryota checks in with Bush that had MP in it. Another turtle for Blacklist. They're using the, all the purifies, all of the movement speed boosts, and their early power spikes to just run through Omega. Like this square, this boss that Oki is putting up. Yeah. Blacklist not respecting it at all. Yeah, they don't care. Uh, especially since Lord JM is there with the glorious pathway. So it, it's like just cancels out the RWM that Uke can place. And at the same time, Haji has been performing well with the Zushin. The KDA machine, we haven't been highlight highlighting him that much. But look at how Chatko is performing so far. He's having a hard time trying to go for those initiations because of the threat of the Lantern Flare from Haji. Even with or without a Purify. The yeah. Purify is just an extra layer that Blavis can use aggressively. Now they're 2,000 gold ahead. All turtles over to the Agents. 
and not a single thing taken by Omega. Sure, Andorio has uh, taken some shields up top, but wait, oh no, he's in trouble. This is bad. Oh, this is three agents going after Andorio. Oh! MPTK tries to cut them off. Andori manages to escape, uses the Retribution. Here, Babel will be used with Devils of Blades as well, just to escape. A lot of ultimates has been casted, but fortunately for the Barangay, Andori is safe. I mean, you count your blessings, oh, but it's good. still bad, because look, Blacklist is just running amok. And... All right, I understand why. It was a long haul plan for Blacklist. You see how they went coast to coast, top, yeah. all the way down the river to try and defend from Joan, but all right. For once, Smart Omega in the series gets something that they want for free. Finally, finally. No casualties, no trades, but I do like to commend what Perks has been doing. But, uh, prior to the Andoryu uh, chase, Perks actually used the Holy Baptism just to check up where Chakno was actually in. So those kinds of small things that these pro players are doing enables Blacklist to just really be confident enough and make sure that no initiations can be used by Omega as he tried to work on Reorder right now. Just look at the damage as early as now coming in from Bruno, from Ohem. It's a lethal, oh, it's a lethal Ube. And now, emotional damage set in by Lord Jay, and I'm sure someone saw that. Ukir must have saw, seen it from the corner of his map. And that's going to be a 100% turtle take rate. I'm pretty sure. Adoriu is hoping. Here we go. What? Seen, but Andorius' hopes will come true as he gets a retribution steal. Now the counterattack of Blacklist. They are uh -oh. mad. They want to go for a trade. And it looks like Shaku is going to be their next target. But Ryota, Ukir, and the rest of the Barangay are here to do the counterattack. Finally, still coming in from Joe, as Shaku will also fall down in exchange for MP. Perks and Oheb, and they're not even done as Ryota manages to escape. A 3 for one trade, plus the turtle for the Barangay. A slow build up in a crescendo of violence, cascading into a 3 for one trade. Smart Omega for patience for a good minute, up until that moment. You know what? It's the non-zero percent that Andorio was going to steal it, but I think the shielding and the extra damage on the Ling was just enough yeah. to swing back the momentum into Omega's hands. Look at that. Top lane, mid lane, the turtle, and now 500 gold over to the green and blue. Yeah, this is where uh, Omega has been commended all throughout the season. Their macro mechanics, even when they're behind, they know how to make things work. They know how to manage the economy. And Doryu has been doing a very good job. And I'd just like to say that he's my most important player of the season. That's for it. me, that's for me. I'll allow it. <laughs> the Alamat Awards being crowned later on this week. Checking the map right now. Lower quarter is where the Lord will spawn. And I'm talking about the actual Lord, although Lord James is camping. So far, that's a uh, that's a stark difference, right? Lord JM always first to the scene. Ryota will be answering. Ryota will be like, "All right, if I'm going, everybody's going." And for the first time in a while, is that a, is that a that's a molten essence? Okay. Right. okay, so they work on the turret down bottom just to manage trade. But Andorio again, just look at this, maximizing the time uh, Omega has been giving him. He's playing the map. This is something you could not have done in game one, and he's making up for lost time. Clear. Clean push, top lane tier two. He's making up for what happened a while ago. <laughs> you, I, almost, I almost forgot, you had your mind. <laughs> and now the Lord, they're taking it at about half health, and oh, there's a big choke plan. Okay, you know that this is what Ryota is going to do, just really try and zone out the members of the agents, and now they're forced to look for a trade. Even Empty King goes in after Chakno. And look at Ryota, just with the ultimate, onto perks. He's going to fall down, but for the price of the Lord. You know what? That's a worthy trade. And Omega lost no tempo on the map. Where they still have a wave of top with the bottom. They lose the tier one. Oh, they want to go for the clash. And Joe picks up a the kill. Day. And a shutdown coming in from Haji. A two for one trade. Blacklist answers right back with two kills to for their own. As Omega still has the luxury of having a first turn on top. This mobile hospital draft by Blacklist able to take kills underneath turrets. I mean, Big J was timing out the brilliance. Uh, if that was up for sure, he would have survived. But oh, wait, a, oh, look at this Grand Theft Orange. Andoryu, serving up to Chaknu. I'm pretty sure Andoryu's gonna take it. Amazing work, one star. Okay, they're just really returning the favor of what Blacklist has been doing for the past few games, even the start of this game, as Blacklist makes quick work of this board. Again, Omega putting a lot of flesh up pressure onto the opposing lane. They're gonna get another turret. I'm sure with pleasure. Yeah. Because it's the first time <laughs> in, what, a collective 20, 30 minutes that they're able to play. Yeah. Game one, sure, they got the first two minutes, but from there on, Blacklist kept the choke hold. Yeah, he's exceeded. The time of game number one was 10.30. Already. A fast game for the ages, but right now, Omega, looking at the statistics, looking at the gold difference, rather, we can see that Blacklist, in terms of gold, gold lane, Oeb's ahead. Yeah, but look at Andoryu now. 2K. 2K ahead. That's so important. Given that MP the King, uh, despite playing a solid role in game one, now is playing the same role, but something tells me he should have stepped on the clutch. Something tells me he should have been a little more aggressive, laid down uh, on the main advantage that you have as an alpha against a lane, because Sure, one of the main strengths of an alpha yeah. is is cool, right? You're, it's no cooldown. You're able to close the gap and you're able to get into places where other junglers couldn't have with the same amount of frequency. That and, of course, the true damage burst. Uh, our analyst at the Infinity Combine covered this earlier on yeah. in the post-match uh, breakdown. But now, even against Assassin, even against Andorio, even against somehow find Andorio, 
that might be a good matchup, but so far he's only played the Ubi. He's only been yeah. walking along with, 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 with the mobile hospital. How are you going to find the door you and for some reason just keeps managing to Fair find enough. something? That's a, that's a paradox. Yeah, exactly. So right now, Blacklist problem just keeps adding and adding. And at the same time, I do like to say that Lord JM is not that activated compared to game number one because specifically of the high loss. Whenever he uses the high loss, it, it, it seems like it limits his micro skills. That's right. Unlike when you see him use the Arlot, the Pintas. Which is interesting because you can see now in real time the code switching, the mental clutch that Lord Game has to play. That from game one, he really was calling shots. Although that was a tanky Benedetta, there was a lot of mechanics involved. Here, he's a high loss. He's an initiator. Now, Lord oh. standing. Look at him from the back! A three-man knockoff from Shaq. You paired up with the real movement of the coming in from Oki. And Oryu goes in. Personal fall down. Captain's blade is there. Yo, the quite dangerous. What? Oh, they're bursting down every single agent in exchange, but they're countering it. Blacklist answers with three kills of their own. Lord JM MP is left. Oh. For Black and Omega, it's Ryota and Ukir. What a bloody exchange. The Lord Pit, a mass grave. Three from Omega, three from Blacklist. Although MP is standing, he is a retribution holder. He's not as confident. Look at Lord JM. Oh, son, on to Ukir. Will he be able to escape the Stone Order? The Ring of Punishment. Ukir! Might just be enough to burst down Ukir as MP the King trying to solo kill the Lord here. Of course, he's not going to make it. A Lord scored by Blacklist. A huge, huge turnaround for this game. That clash started off with a beautiful conceal from Shaknu from the backline, catching three, plus real world manipulation from Ukir. But again, the Ubi strat, the sustain, the heals from Perks, the revitalize from the blacklist was more than enough for them to recharge and get three kills of their own. Not all trades are made equal. The two remaining for Black at that moment was more valuable than those remaining for Omega, which allowed for them to get the kill, to get the zone out, to get the Lord. And now there's an enhanced one marching up top. And there's one recalling in mid. Okay. Lord JM, the, the, the clutch gene in this young man. Uh, I just literally said that this high pick is limiting his micro skills. I stand corrected. I'm literally standing right now. You know, Lord JM, you continue you to amaze that. me each and every you time. Don't say that to Lord JM. <laughs> he, he, was, he was programmed to win, and now he's going to break the code. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't even 1v1 up against the door. You're trying to prevent him to go for the split push. And now Omega has to deal with his enhanced Lord up top. Here we go. Can Omega defend? They have less than ideal wave clear. Look at the Thornton in the back, forcing Haji to respond. Buy in. So much needed time for his team to take down that Lord. The map is blue, Egan. There's just one turret left for Smart Omega in the bottom lane. Well, same is true for Blackness, but suddenly a momentum shift at 15 minutes. Yeah. This is worse. I, I would rather have these, these trades back and forth in early because Smart Omega, they have to find another way to kill Ohem. Yeah. I think that was a mistake that led them to that bad exchange. Ohem survived for too long. Plus the Purify, uh, the presence of the Purify, even if Chaku continues to find good, uh, Jeet Kondu, not even just the way of the Dragon, Jeet Kondu, uh, the, the way of the Dragon really needs to connect onto the proper target. Yeah. This time it's Ohem. But once Ohem is out of the picture, where are you going to expect the damage coming from Blacklist? Yeah, uh, I mean, sure, it could come from MP the King, but that's... But he's kind of a utility now. That's DLT. It, yeah. It's damage over time, and it's more of a punish when you get hurt by an Alpha. But the Ohev, the Bruno, like, that's... That, that, that's what really hurts. So that's Omega's plan now. Blacklist, they're in control. They can just flush out these bushes, make sure Omega's plan doesn't happen, and... Is there a limit to what the Curly Nightmare can do? I, I think there's no limit, honestly. Again, they are the ones who ended the streak of Fnatic Onyx. If you're gonna recall that series, go to game to watch it. That was the most intense one because it took Omega three base defenses without inhibitor turrets and they were able to pull it off. So this this looks like it, Omega still can produce a comeback up against Blacklist. They still have two inhibitor turrets, the presence of Endoryu with the Ling. They're able to create split push and an eventual force a reaction from Blacklist for this Lord fight. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm reading the map right, it might be another Lord-centric fight. It's gonna be very similar to the initiation of that last one, that Blacklist won uh, later on in a delayed fashion. But here, this time, Omega might be banking on that outside trajectory. They might try to win from the outside. Because if you lean hard in the Blacklist lineup, that's a losing fight. Yeah, they just have too much heals, too much purify. Too much, too much of everything is actually good this time for Blacklist. So Omega, if they can manage to find the pickoff, especially for Endoryu, or a proper setup for Chakra, with the way of the Dragon, the problem is Omega and Perks has their purify. They're weaving in and out of the Lord pit. Lord shuffle in full commencement. Lord now to a third of his health. Chakra a lot of damage. Here's up the Okay, they're way. going all in once again, popping Chakra's immortality, plus the Holy Baptism will get to. Chakra used to force the flicker we go. just to escape. Here comes Seven to play counter attack coming in from Omega, and finally they get OM down! But the sustain from Blacklist is there. Lord JM will fall down as well. Hachi picks up a kill onto Big J, and Shaknu will go down. And now they're targeting Andoryu. He does have immortality, so they can go all in. It gets up again. The stun coming in from Perks, oh. and Hachi will bring the Curly Nightmare down. 
And it's Ukir and another tank left while Blacklist still have a lot left in the tank as three members are on the map. Haji pushing Ukir out of his sights, brings him back in, playing with his food. Oh, Ukir though, moments away. And Perks, I have to commend Perks, two consecutive, make it three. Holy baptism, game changing plays to bring Blacklist back on the lead. Riyata looking for the grab, grab, full stacks on Perks, but he knows that that's a losing about. And Smart Mega respawns just in time. But I don't think they have enough time. 18 and a half minutes in, Ingan. 3,000 gold up, Blacks International. Yes, they lost Oheb in the exchange. But the fact that they split up and then reconvened for the Ube just changes the dynamics of the fight. If Omega figured out the first layer, how to break that, apparently there's more. There's more. Again, they're proving me wrong. I just said, what happens if Oheb gets caught? Where is the damage going to come from? <laughs> apparently, they have more in store for their team. Oh, this is difficult. Wow. Omega has a less than ideal wave clear. It's so hard. Now they're going to crack into the face once more. Don't even have to wait for the Lord Crimson Beacon coming in from Haji as they try to work on Shaktu here. He's going to fall down. No immortality. First man down is Shaktu. Real woman manipulation coming in from Ukir though. Real that goes in. But is it going to be enough though to defend the Lord? Even the Lord is still having. Oh. They're going to go in, forcing out a lot of ultimates as Joe will fall down. It's just Ukir and Adoryu left. Blacklist has a huge advantage. They will go up to zero. The Codebreakers at match point. Are we throwing back to FPL Philippines season 12? Is this the same meteoric rise that we witnessed as they made their way to the M5 stage? Amazing work by Blacks International. What's going on with Omega? I have no idea, but one thing for sure is Blacklist is really proving that they can go head to head with anyone. You're so good at team fighting. I wonder what our panelists at the end of the game think.